Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how you can make an oil wash for your miniatures. I'm in the middle of painting 20 tanks for my Astra Militarum army, and I wanted something quicker than Agrax Earthshade to shade in all the recesses and bring out all the details like the little rivets all over this tank. I've been looking into how to do oil washes, and it turns out they're cheaper, they're less messy, it's much faster, and you can also correct any errors really quickly and easily. But the whole process of making your own wash is super easy, so I thought I'd share it here with you and show you how I've done it on my first couple of tanks. Right, let's get started. So first you're going to need an old brush, one you don't mind getting a little bit ruined. And then I've just got a pot here, any plastic tub's going to do, but I've just got an old Agrax Earthshade pot that I've cleaned out. I've got a couple of wooden sticks and then the Winton Oil Colour Windsor & Newton paint. And I bought two, Burnt Umber and Ivory Black. And you can even mix them both together for a darker brown. I've just got some white spirit that I had at home, but it is recommended to use artist thinners. I'm a bit impatient, so I didn't want to wait, but this worked out just great anyway. You may want to get a pipette as well, depending on the container you're using. So first thing I did was pour some of that white spirit into this little pot. Now, when you get the artist's minerals, they call it, and it'll be low odour, so much better to use. And I'll put some examples of that at the end of this video. So I put some in a pot. Now, you don't have to make a lot, and it's recommended to make up what you need for the project. Because I'm doing 20 of these tanks at once, I want quite a bit. So I'm going to put in a bit of this paint, and as this is the first time I've done it here in the video, I wasn't sure how much to put in. So it's a lot of trial and error, just getting it right and getting it as dark as you want it to be. So I'm mixing it in with the stick here, and I'll use a paint mixer a little while later on that you'll see, and that gets it really smooth and dissolves that paint completely. It turns out this much white spirit in an Agrax Earthshade pot is a lot. So you can put a fair amount of paint in here and you'll see I'm adding a bit more just till I get the consistency and the colour right. I'm going in for a bit more again. So this really is trial and error, getting it how you want it. And I'll share some tips later on because things like how much thinner you put in will decide how easily this is going to spread around on its own and go into the recesses. Now I put a little black in there just to darken it up a little bit. And so I'm going to mix that together. Still not enough for me though. So you can see here on the stick how it stains it. It's got a nice black brown colour to it, but it's not quite dark and rich enough. So I want to put a bit more in again. So here we go. Here goes a bit more of that brown. We'll pop that in and then we'll put in a bit more. Let's keep going. And then we'll mix that up. I'll take it over to the mixer in a second. Bit more black. And now I'm going to mix it on this piece. This gets things really going. So we'll shake it up and then that's going to dissolve that completely and get a nice smooth paint that we can use for our wash. You don't need this. I'm just lucky I got it from my friend Terry, but it's really handy to have. If you haven't got it, just stir the pot a lot more. All right, let's have a look now. I've got a fresh stick. Let's pop that in and we'll get an idea of how dark it is. And yeah, that's much better. Let's wipe that off. That's a lot richer. That's just what I'm looking for. So now we can try this out on a model. So here we go. I've got this part of the dozer from a Chimera and I'm just going to put some on here. I wanted to see if it would actually run like that panel line stuff from Tamiya that you can buy really runs down. And it's, it's not as good as that. There is things you can do like you can varnish your model and then use it. So the surface tension is less and it will spread a lot quicker. But um, this still goes along though. It's hard to see here because it's so small and, and the recess is dark anyway with the shadow. But it's definitely going in and spreading along. And the good thing is with this is you can clean it up even once it's dried. You can get a little sponge and clean it up. I'll show you some good sponges later on in the video that you can buy as well. Again, nice and cheap and will last you a long time. The main thing I want this for though are those rivets. There's loads of them on the tanks for the Astra Militarum. So here we go. This is exactly what I wanted. One blob and it just spreads out on its own. Try doing this with Agrax Earthshade. It just doesn't happen. So this stuff's awesome. In here you can really see. Did you see it then? It just spread along the line on its own. So that's where it's really great. You get a dot, pop it in the corner and then it will go in the recess on its own and it wants to level out. So that's going to save a ton of time. And again, it's going to be easy to clean up if you do make a mess. If you put too much on anywhere, you can easily clean it up. But with things like tanks, this is going to be perfect. 
I felt like it needed just a little bit more richness to it. So I'm adding a little bit more of the paint in there. And so this is going to be the final time I put the paint in. So you can see I've put quite a lot, but that is a rather large pot of paint I've used there. So, you know, it's a fair amount of white spirit has gone in the pot. I think if you're only making enough for one tank or a smaller model, you could just get a bottle top and just make a tiny amount up. And I think that would be much better because I don't know how well this is going to keep in here and whether I can use it again. But here we go. This is nice and rich now. This is going to be absolutely what I'm looking for for my tanks. So let's try it out again on another dozer blade. So I'm using the parts that you're not really going to see just in case. And yeah, that's much better much darker it's got a really nice rich brown to it this is really going to make all those details pop out on the tanks and here we've got two tanks both from a hellhound so the one on the left i've done and the one on the right i've got to do and so on the one on the left this is the first one so i was very careful I didn't put too much paint on it and i found the more i did the more brave I was getting with it and putting a little bit extra really worked. I cleaned the tops off here and you can see they really pop out and I haven't even highlighted them yet. So once I add a dry brush of a highlight to that, this is really going to contrast nicely. But it definitely brings all these details out, brings the tank to life. And I think I need to be a bit heavy handed though with it, put a bit more on and then that's going to give an even greater effect. So let's have a look at the second tank I did and you can see how I was putting a little bit extra on. So here we go, we've got the second one. So I just get that brush, get it to a nice point. I've got quite a bit of paint on there though. And I just go put a dot on each bit and look how easy that is, much quicker. I timed it so it takes about 20 minutes a tank to do all these rivets and all the lines as well. So going around all these panel sections and all the recesses, yeah, 20 minutes per tank. So that's going to take me a few hours to get them all done. But then once I've done that, I'm, you know, that's like half a day's painting and I'll have all the recesses done. Then I can highlight them with a dry brush really quickly. So it won't be long until all these tanks are painted up. So hopefully in the next couple of days, they'll be finished and ready for battle. You can see around each one, you get almost like a, a little water stain, but that does go away and it takes about an hour or so to dry and you can't really see that then. So that's really good. But if you find it is too messy, then you can just go back over it with a little sponge dipped in some spirits or thinners and then you can clean that up. So it's really easy to clean up. I'll do the line of a panel here just so you can see as well. So I get quite a bit of paint on the brush and I put a little dot at the top and then that paint wants to go down on its own. So I'm just going to help it along, being really gentle and careful and just to help it work along that line. And that's all there is to it. You just do that around each one and that will really emphasize all the details. I found with lines like this and all these little recesses that you don't have to be that careful. You can just pop the brush in and that really wants to go along. I'm angling it just to help it out a little bit with gravity there. But you can see that it runs really smoothly. I've got a little bit on the panel, but I can just wipe that off with my finger or I can grab a cloth and then I can just get rid of that. And you can even let it dry and go back to it later on with a bit of white spirit and take that off too with a little sponge. So, But this is just really quick, just dotted on, just like that. So this is what really makes the process fast and will get your projects up and running in no time. Here you can see I've just rubbed that off with my finger there. It's smudged a little bit, so we'll need a little clean up later on. But with a cloth there and go back to it with a little sponge later on, that'll be no problem at all. I've learned a few things while I was researching how to do these oil washes. And the first is that the better paint you get, the more pigment it's going to have and the less filler it's going to have. So that means you can get thinner washes because that pigment will be much richer in there. When you have less paint, but more thinner, you're going to get a better flow. So when you start doing all the recesses and all the little panel lines, that's going to flow really quickly on its own. So the less paint you have to put in, the better really. So I bought these paints quite cheap, but you can definitely get ones that are more expensive. And then I think you'll get a better finish from it. I would definitely recommend getting odorless artist thinner. That's going to be better than regular white spirits like I've used. And so I just wanted to get on and do it. And I don't mind for the tanks. I want them to be quite rough and ready. So it suits the project. But if you want something a bit finer and, you know, you're taking a bit more care, I think really go for a better paint and some better thinner. So nice, easy process. No problem to make your own. And if you want to get the same paints I've used, I'll put links down below in the description. And this is the one I got, Winsor & Newton Winton Oil Tube, 37mm. It's going to last ages. I picked up the Burnt Umber, and this was 2 dollars and that included delivery. And then on top of that, I also ordered 
the black, the ivory black. Again, that was two ninety nine. And then I got these nail art sponges, which are going to help with cleanup. I've seen that on a few videos and a few articles I've read as well. And then I also got those pipettes. I'll use them a lot for my airbrushing. Not so much for this, but they're going to come in handy and really cheap. So altogether, that was like £13 for the paints, the sponges and the pipettes. If you want to go for an artist white spirit, then you can get the 500ml one for around 6 99 like this. But if you want something a bit more high end, then you've got the 1 litre odourless mineral spirit, transparent. This is £32, includes delivery. And now with those paints and that, you, know, you could get started with £13. You don't need the pipettes or those sponges. So for £13, that's pretty good. You're up and running and you can make 500ml of wash and it's going to be even cheaper if you don't order online but go into your local art store and pick up the products there so you won't have to pay for shipping that way. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope it encourages you just to give it a go. It's really easy to make. You just get the paint, wet it down until you get the right colour and then you're good to go and it's going to save so much time when you start doing big projects like this and you've got to get those panel lines and all those rivets done. So yeah, hope it was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did like the video, please hit that like button, subscribe for more videos like this one. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can join me next time here on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.